Hello everybody and welcome to another Motormouth Mall video. Uh, we're going to demonstrate the modulator board on a Galaxy 2527 base radio. And the Galaxy radio has got a built-in amplifier on it now to bring the power up a little bit. Which uh, is a good thing because my bird watt meter here only has a 100 watt slug in it. And I wouldn't be able to show you much resolution down below the... Uh, uh, in, in the ranges that the radio does by itself. So therefore, uh, we, we do use a 100 watt meter for this application. And that also may answer some people's questions who seem to be wrapped up in watts and power. Uh, this scope of this video, no pun intended, is uh, basically regarding quality and uh, audio, not really power or watts. But I'm going to include that in the video anyway so you can see what's going on. Uh, we're going to switch over to a different view now. We're going to switch over to the oscilloscope view. And the oscilloscope view basically is going to be uh, on this other camera right over here. And now you can see the scope and you're going to see a unmodulated reference carrier. That carrier, by the way, on our watt meter is a 10 watt carrier. There you go, 10 watts. And unmodulated. Uh, it's one box above and one box below the center line. Uh, that's basically for the purpose of checking percentage of modulation. When we modulate that box and increase its level up to one additional box and down one additional box and pinch off in the center, that's textbook perfect 100% modulation, positive and negative peaks. The positive peaks are the ones above and below. The negative peaks are the ones in the middle. Don't confuse positive and negative. It's plus, plus, minus. Now, I'm going to modulate this carrier. I'm going to modulate this carrier with uh, uh, a signal generator so I don't have to ooh and ah into the microphone. And now I'm going to show you that carrier modulated now to 100%. All right, first we'll take off the tone, then we'll put on the tone. Now, when we modulate this radio to 100%, what's happening is we're just about pinching off in the center. We're a box up, a box down. Our 10 watt carrier grew. Our 10 watt carrier grew to 40 watts. Again, that's textbook perfect. Now most people go in and they clip the limiter out of a radio. When they clip the limiter out of the radio, here's what happens. You slowly increase your positive peaks, but look at the negative peaks. See that big flat cutoff line in the center of the bumps? Less area under the curve between bumps, more area under the curve because of the height or the percentage of positive peaks. And yeah, they do reach 200%, 250% positive peaks. And the watt meter does go berserk. It goes right off the scale. And watch the watt meter come down as I lower the uh, audio back down toward 100%. There's 150%. There's back to 100%, right? Nah, there. And now look at our scope again. You now see the difference between what happens when a limiter gets cut versus not having a limiter. And of course, everyone loves the watts. They love that meter going off the scale. There is a way to accomplish that and to do it without horrible negative peak clipping, which is the same thing as pinching off the carrier just like that. But it's doing it be with it's a, it's creating that pinched off condition prior to the carrier actually getting pinched off. So people mistake that for not overmodulating. It is overmodulation. It's not maintaining a nice curved line down here in the negative peaks. And if we zoom the scope in on that, you can see it's a nice curved line. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to put the modulator in the radio. Uh, pardon me, modulator in the radio. And we're going to set the radio now to our same 10 watt carrier. And there is our 10 watt reference carrier. Again, the watt meter is going to show our 10 watt reference carrier. And the scope is showing our 10 watt reference carrier. And now we're going to apply audio to the modulator and set it for 100% modulation. Again, same looking pattern as what we had with the other one. And same positive peaks, same negative peaks, and our same 40 watts PEP. All right, agreed? Everything, everything's kosher there, copacetic? Our next step is going to be to show what happens when we increase the positive peaks with the modulator. And keep your eye on these negative peaks down here. And notice that they don't change. The positive peaks change. There's 100, 200, 220% positive peak modulation. Look at all the area under the curve here. Look at the lack of overmodulation. And look at the, the positive peaks we're achieving. Now watch the meter. 
Now, as I bring that down again, there's back to our 100% modulation, and there's 200%, 220% modulation. We can go a little farther with it. We can go up to 250% modulation, but we do start getting a little bit of a flat top condition on these top peaks here, and that's not really desirable. It, it starts giving you uh, some soft clipping audio effects and artifacts that really are things that you want to take care of in your uh, audio processing. So we want to back that down to where it's still rounded and nice looking, which is right about there, which is 200% positive peaks, and there's 100% right there. And we go all the way back down again to our 100% level, and there you have it. Now that's a demonstration of envelope growth versus clip limiters. That's true asymmetrical modulation. Now let me show you frequency response. That's being done at one kilohertz. Let me show you the, uh, the, the, the signal generator now. The signal generator has got the 1K button selected and we're at one. And if we look up at the uh, signal uh, generator, or I should say the, the frequency counter, you'll see we're at 1.022 kilohertz. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch our, our uh, response down to 100 hertz. Now, most uh, uh, radios fall apart at 100 hertz. So we're going to use 100 hertz as our test frequency now. And we're going to key the very same radio up and show you that we're still making 40 watts peaks. Actually, slightly bit more than 40 watts PEP right now. And we're going to slow the scope down to where you can see a more... Uh, full complete sine wave and then we're going to turn the positive peaks on that up again and look at the negative peaks the negative peaks aren't changing perfectly round beautiful negative peak trough no pinch off and watch those positive peaks grow that's what asymmetrical modulation is all about and watch any other radio do that there is nothing else that will do that and again watch our watt meter as we zoom from down at 100% level down to uh, well off the scale and at no time do we achieve pinch off in either direction it's perfect and now let's see what happens if you want to send extreme bass in the audio uh, we're going to switch over here now to another view to the generator and I'm going to switch to times 10 scale and we're still on 1 and times 10 and I'm going to look at the, uh, the, the, the frequency counter once again and show you that we're now at 0 0.015 kilohertz or 10 hertz. Now we're going to key up again and show the watt meter. And now well, let's just show the scope first. Show the scope. And I'm going to take the scope to a speed that will allow you to see that, hopefully. There's the full, complete, non pinched off waveform. I'll slow it down some more. That's kind of weird. And then we're going to shrink it down to a low level and then raise it all the way up to 220% positive peak modulation again. Hope you can see that. I'm also going to show you what happens here if I can. Oh, uh, can you see the ammeter on the power supply over there? No, you can't. Can you see the watt meter up close? Can you see that the watt meter is pulsing? It's actually showing you the pulses of that 10 cycles per second. And that's extremely low frequency here. Look at the ICOM S meter. Can you see it pulsing? I hope so. At any rate, it's pulsing, trust me. The next demonstration is going to be a high frequency response. Now we're going to go up to our uh, 10 kilohertz. And on the oscilloscope, we're going to look at 10 kilohertz here. And we've got to change the scope speed so that you can actually see the 10 kilohertz. Now, there's some jagged stuff going on there, but just so you can see, 10 kilohertz is being passed without any problem whatsoever. And again, watch, no overmodulation, uh, nothing horrible, and yet we're still making, even at 10 kilohertz, uh, sorry, yeah, 10 kilohertz, we're still making uh, 60 watts, 65 watts. Um, and that's, in actuality, uh, yeah, 65 watts. All right, now, if we raise that to 20 kilohertz, there is now 20 kilohertz, and we're going to look at the S meter on the ICOM receiver, and you're going to see 
a new carrier at 27045. That 27045 carrier is the upper sideband generated by the audio passing through the modulator, just in case anyone had any, any doubts as to how much audio can pass through the uh, modulator. Now I'm going to raise the frequency up to 30 kilohertz, and you can watch the S meter start dropping and dropping and dropping. And we're now throwing a carrier 30 kilohertz above and below our initial starting point of 27025. And as we walk the ICOM up, from 27045 up to 27055, we'll now see one more carrier again. That shows the extreme bandwidth of the modulator, and we're going to go back to a 100 hertz signal. And 100 hertz, you can hear the bleed over from the close proximity of the radio. And uh, we'll now show you. What happens when we walk our way back down to 27025? And there is our beautiful, clean, undistorted, huge signal with lots of bandwidth and lots of fidelity and lots of asymmetrical modulation. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope it's been instructional and helpful and for one, how to use a scope and basically the characteristics of the modulator. Uh, enjoy. Feel free to contact me at motormouthmall.com or john at motormouthmall.com is the email address or 805-934-3355 thank you very much for watching you gotta know when to hammer down know when to drop the mall know when to walk the dog and when to kick the cat you never spike your mic when you're wallering in the mud Cause there's always another station That'll drop the mall on you And one day A.C. Fleer He was gonna get even He bought himself an amplifier And turned it up on high And much to his dismay Mother Nature took a turn again And once again he's just Another mud duck You gotta know when to hammer down Know when to drop the mall Know when to walk the dog And when to kick the cat You never spike your mind When you're wallering in the mud Cause there's always another station That'll drop the mall on you Yes, there's always another station That'll drop them all on you